I hardly know what to tell you about the next half hour, except that it has been reported as true by those to whom it happened. It has been investigated, and no one, as yet, has been able to explain it or disprove it. Stern, Harold, age 53, died April 14th, no known next to kin. Who could explain the inexplicable events in the life of Harold Stern? Certainly what happened to him and to those involved with him has never happened before. And certainly it will never happen again. <laughs> Mary Chase, you led us. I beg your pardon? We've been tearing the city down looking for you, Mr. Stern. Afraid you made a mistake. My name is Jordan, Frank Jordan. That's the name of the mailbox. No mistake, Mr. Stern. I'm Lieutenant Barry. Dyed your hair, comb it differently, but the description still fits. Why did you do that, Mr. Stern? I tell you, you made a mistake. I don't understand this. I don't understand you. I think you were public enemy number one. I'm telling you, you've made a mistake. All right, now cut it out, will you? Give me the lab. We traced you through some tax accounts you used to work for. Manager said you had pledged him to secrecy. But in a case like this, it, this Lieutenant Barry, we finally located Harold Stern. Yeah, we'll have him over to the hospital in 15 minutes. You will not. I right, get your coat, Mr. Stern. Pretty chilly outside. You can't tell me what to do. You can't treat me as if I was a criminal or something. Get out of my house. No, 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 no. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I guess I did barge in on you kind of impolitely, but uh, this girl in the hospital is unconscious. She's liable to die any minute unless she gets a transfusion. You have a pretty rare type of blood, Mr. Stern. The hospital told me you're the only known donor in this whole area. There has to be others. Instead of wasting your time here with me, why don't you go out and find some other blood donor? No time. You're gonna have to find somebody else. Didn't you understand me? The girl is dying. I'm sorry, but... She's just a working kid, but... If it's money, I guess she can... Oh, it's not money. I never took money. Then what is it? I don't have to explain. Look, it's nothing to give blood. Thousands of people do it every day without any trouble. It isn't that. Then look at this card. Now, look at all the dates. In the last 15 years, you must have given blood, what, 25 times? 31 times. Well, then you know there's nothing to it. Is there anything on that card about my giving blood the past three years? That's when you dropped out of sight, isn't it? I don't want to talk about it. Uh, you changed your name, moved clear across town, warned your friends not to tell anybody? Now, look, Lieutenant, I've got a lot of tax work to complete tonight. Instead of wasting my time and yours, why don't you go out and find another blood donor? I see you uh, sign these tax returns with this new name, Frank Jordan. I suppose you've changed it legally. Yes. Fine. Got a copy of the court records around? I, I mean authorizing the change? No. Where do you keep them? Bank vaults? Yes. Which bank? 
Well, to be perfectly honest, I haven't got around to changing it legally. Well, what do you think of that? Signing a false name to tax returns? Look, those reports are absolutely accurate. I lean over backwards to have my clients file honest reports. The name's only a technicality. Mm, but the uh, federal boys have some pretty strict rules about that. You can't believe Of course, me. sir, that's their headache. All I've got to worry about is finding Harold Stern and getting him over to General Hospital. I get it. And if I give you the blood... It's like you say. If the reports are honest, the name's only a technicality. No! What kind of a crumb are you? I can't do it. I can't go through that again. It would kill me. I just can't do it. What's the matter with you? Don't what you are you talking about? Don't you think I want to help the girl? Do you think I'm some kind of insensitive monster? Look, I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Here. I have these clippings. Man slain in robbery. Drowned in pool. Inherits millions in surprise bequest. It was no surprise to me. Inherits millions in surprise bequest. Man slain and robbed. What are these? I gave my blood five times that last year. And those clippings related to three of them. There were two others. One of the two just got a divorce a few months ago. The other is doing well, thank God. I knew we would. What are you talking about? I don't expect you to believe me. Believe what? Something went wrong that year. Whenever I gave my blood, somehow I became involved in their lives. I knew in advance what was going to happen to them. You mean you knew this poor guy was going to drown in a pool? Yes. Yes. Well, well, not exactly. Well, did you or didn't you? Well, I knew something was going to happen to him. When or how or where. No, I didn't know that, but... But I knew that something terrible, I had a premonition. A voice. I don't care whether you believe me or not. I don't care about anything but your blood. Now, come on. Get your jacket and let's go. No, can't you understand? I can't go on living with a thing like this. Knowing in advance something was going to happen to somebody. Oh, well, if it was something good, well, that's fine. But, but if it isn't, then you can't do anything about it. It's a living hell. I just can't do it. I can't do it. Now, there must be some other blood donor with my type. You, you've got to find him. Williams, come in here a minute. We're taking Mr. Stern down to headquarters, booking him on a charge of using a false name on government documents. I'll call the hospital and tell them it's all off. Hey, General Hospital. I'm sorry. Get in the car. Hello, Mr. Wazinski. I'm Lieutenant Barrett. Yeah. You drove me right over. Mm. Is this the man? Yes. This is the girl's father. What kind of a cheap trick is this? So that's the call you made to the hospital to have him here, so I changed my mind. Well, it won't work. Look, mister, she's just a kid. She's just 19. I can't help her. She's all I got in the world. Her, her ma died when she was a baby. No! She's a sweet, good-natured kid. You want money? You tell me how much, and I'll go out and get it for you. I don't care what I have no, to do. No, it's not the money. Well, then what is it? Tell me, what is it? I have my reasons. Mister, she's dying. You, you, you don't want to let her die. She's dying. I can't. I can't. I can't. Make him do it. I can't make him. You're just going to let her die. Murderer! <laughs> Stern. 
I said, get out. I thought you were going to arrest me. Get out. I want to congratulate you, Mr. Stern. You're a citizen we can all be proud of. Why did you have to find me? All right. All right. All right. I just came by to thank you. For what? Nothing. Just my life. I'm the girl who was in the hospital. Oh. I'm surprised to see you up and about so quickly. Quickly? Almost a month. A whole month in that creek joint. How'd you find me? The people in the lab. Well, they shouldn't have given you my name. There were no thanks necessary. Oh, modest. That's cute. Well, at least there's one thing that's rare about me, huh? My blood type. I am happy to see you up and about, Miss. Lynn. Marta Lynn. Marta without the H. You busy? No, no. Uh, won't you come in and have some coffee? I was oh. just having some. I guess I could use some. <laughs> you still weak? Oh, I'll live. Is uh, your father taking care of you? Oh, you got quite a sense of humor. I beg your pardon? As soon as my old man found out I was going to live, zoom, off he went somewhere to celebrate. That's the last I saw of him. He seemed quite devoted to you. Oh, he's a big fake. Tears flow like wine, and wine flows like tears. He's been celebrating one thing or another since 1940. I mean, like World War II, the flu epidemic, recession. Well, he'll come back crying, but only if he finds out I've been hit by a truck or somebody shot me. You shouldn't talk that way. Why not? What's the big tragedy? Nothing like that's going to happen to you. Oh? How do you know? I mean, you shouldn't be morbid. Morbid? Who is taking care of you? Same person who's been looking after me since age 10, me. Hey, uh, you got any sugar? No sugar. Oh, do you know anything about the, uh, the kitten club? Kitten club? Yeah, I got an appointment for a job there. It's on this side of town. No, I, I don't think I know... That strip kitten... joint over on 7th Street. Strip? Uh, you mean you, uh... Oh, no. I'm just a camera girl, but thanks for the compliment. It was nice of you to drop by. Well, thanks for the blood. I hope it brings me luck. I hope so, Miss Lynn. I hope so. You know, you're really very nice. And, uh, it's not Lynn, it's Wazinski, like my old man. And, uh, Martha with an H. That's right. Yeah, I'll meet you at court 9.30 in the morning. Well, both the men will be there. Where's the girl? Sure, uh, uh, just a second, George. Where's the girl, Lieutenant? What girl? Well, the... I, don't, I don't know. She's still in the hospital, I guess. No, she's not there. She left a week ago. Where does she live? Uh, George, hold on a second. Uh, look, Mr. Stern, are you all right? Something's going to happen, Lieutenant. George. George, I'll call you back in the morning. Yeah. Lieutenant, that girl's going to die. Well, it happens to the best of us. No, I mean violently and soon. That's your little crystal ball? I tell you, Lieutenant, this is and no... How is she going to die? I don't know how. Mr. Stern, maybe you ought to see a doctor. Hmm? Please, where does she live? I don't know. Call the hospital. You call the hospital. I did. They wouldn't tell me. Mr. Stern, it's late and I'm tired. Look, Lieutenant, you came to me and made me do something I didn't want to do. You tricked me into it, and now you're involved, too. All right. You want to play crystal gazer? Fortune teller? Get me General Hospital. 
Take it easy. Relax. No answer. She's in there. She came in a couple of hours ago, and I didn't see her leave. I well, she's not in there now. Come on, I've wasted enough time. Yeah. It's the silliest thing I've ever heard. No. She's in there. I Wait! Her. But I smell gas. Gas? Gas. I know it's gas. Got your pass key? Uh, downstairs. Well, get it. Go back to bed. It is gas. I told you something that was going to happen. I told you. I told you. I knew it. I knew this would happen. She's perfectly all right. Come on, let's get her out of here. Oh, when you look at that door, the landlady will absolutely kill me. What did I tell you? She wants to see me first thing in the morning, see all the heave ho. You know, I wish you'd do me a favor and stop saving my life. You mustn't talk that way. Well, why can't you find yourself another hobby? Why don't you take up stamp collecting? You want a cup of coffee? Don't you think it's too late? Oh, it's too late for a lot of things. That, that dumb lieutenant with all his funny questions. It was an accident. It was. Of course. Oh, don't say of course like that. If I was going to kill myself, I wouldn't do it with a lot of smelly gas. Besides, I'm always having accidents. A couple of nights ago, I fell asleep with a cigarette in my mouth, burned a hole in the blanket. Oh, wait till Mr. Summers sees that. You must be more careful. Why? Couldn't the world struggle along without me? I mean, if it really tried. What made you stop by tonight, anyhow? We'll see how you work. <laughs> no change. Still loud. Did you get that job as a camera girl? No. Don't you read the papers? Some more of the famous Wazinski luck. That very night, some hold-up guys shot up the place. Now they're closed down for repairs. Well, you shouldn't try to get a job in a place where there's so much danger. Danger? You, you shouldn't. You really shouldn't. You shouldn't. Look, Mr. Stern, you just gave me some blood. You didn't adopt me. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, too. It's just that I'm not used to having somebody worry about me. It makes me nervous. I've got an idea. What? I'm a tax accountant, you know. So? Can you type? <laughs> I'm hardly the secretarial type. Well, really, it doesn't matter very much. I mean, if you can print carefully with pen and ink. And... You offering me a job? Yes. Why? I feel a sort of responsibility for you. Why? Just do. You really mean that, don't you? Yes. For crying out loud. Look, it would be easy. You could move into my house and then we... Oh! Would... Oh! Oh, no. No, but I... Please don't misunderstand me. I... You see, it's not a very big house. But there's plenty of room. I could sleep in the attic or even get a room next door. I just thought it would be easier. Will you do it? I'd very much like to help you. Well, I sure don't have any better offers, and it'd be a pleasure to get out of this dump. Thank you, Miss Lynn. Wazinski. Wazinski. I thought guys like you went out of style a couple of centuries ago.
Martha, I, I told you not to go swimming so soon after lunch. Well, you asked me not to do so many things, I lost track. Besides, I was only kidding. I fooled him, too. Well, your friend looked a little upset. I thought I'd make like a hero. Why shouldn't I be upset? Thank you very much, young man. For what? Big laugh. I swim ten times better than he does. Oh, yeah? Prove it. Please don't go in. You might get a cramp. Go under. This don't do this, don't do that routine is beginning to bug me. Now, will you let go? Martha, please don't go in. I'm getting a little bored with being treated like a six-year-old child, Mr. Stern. Martha! Martha! Grandpa, I forgot my key. Uh, you remember old Fearless Fosdick? Where were you? We went for a drive. Fearless and me went for a little drive. You're both drunk. 100% super duper trooper drunk. What are you doing driving when you were drunk? Don't you know it's dangerous? You want to end up in a morgue? Worry, worry, worry. You know, you're like a little old lady sitting in a rocking chair worrying about this and worrying about that. Get out. Just a cotton-picking second, Grandpa. If I did something wrong, I'd do more things wrong. Go to bed! Wait outside. Maybe I ought to go. You better wait outside. Okay, Gramps. What's the matter with you? Always going out of your way to put yourself in danger? What big teeth you have, Grandpa. Martha, I'm sorry. Would you believe it? At first, I got a bang out of this kindergarten routine. Martha, if you would only listen to me, perhaps I could explain what Oh, I Mr. Sturm. All right. I'll show you. Martha, I want you to look at these, and then you'll understand what I'm trying to say. Martha, please look at these. I can't let it happen to you. Every one of them. I knew what was going to happen to every one of them, both the good and the bad. Martha, I know what's going to happen to you. So do I. I'm leaving. Unless we do something to prevent it, Martha, you're going to die in a terrible way. Now, knock it off, will you? Believe me, I know. Martha, are you coming or not? He's waiting for me. If you go with this young man, something will happen. I know it will. Martha, please, look at these. Will you please stop acting like this? It's embarrassing. Don't you think I know why you're doing it? What are you talking about? Oh, at first I thought it was cute, but who's kidding who, Mr. Stern? You're 25 years older than I am. What do you mean? You know what I mean. Now, stop acting like that. What do you mean? What are you talking about? You must believe me. You just must believe me. Martha died, violently, fulfilling Harold Stern's prophecy, though certainly not as he had expected. A few months later, Mr. Stern passed away in an asylum for the criminally insane, and there the matter ended. And yet there are those who still speculate about his fantastic power of clairvoyance. The woman who unexpectedly inherited a great fortune, the man who drowned, or his intuition that took him to Martha's room before the gas could kill her. Explain it, we cannot. We can only wonder. Another enigma in the world that thus far remains one step beyond. In a moment, something about next week. <laughs>